I've been telling people for 30 years not to use a dry pad. I've been telling people for 30 years to wash your pad after every section. I've been telling people for 30 years not to wipe off with a dry towel. Well, even an old idiot like me can change because we're going to be using a three millimeter machine, not a rotary to finish. We're going to be doing it with a dry pad. And we're, if we're doing the whole vehicle, one pad would do the whole vehicle without cleaning the pad. And we wipe off with a dry towel. So why this machine? So let me, uh, I have some cheating notes here because- Treat the machine, is that more? Pardon me? Treat the machine. No, uh, because of the stroke. So, but anyways, uh, if we look at the, the rotary, I lied before. So the rotary at 600 RPM with a six inch pad is giving us 4.7 meters per second that that piece of abrasive is going around. With a 25 millimeter, or what we'll say with 21, to get that same amount of movement, you need 4,000 orbits per minute. And they start at 3,500. So if you're using at speed two or three, you're well above that. The 15 millimeter DA at four millimeter, at 5,000 RPMs is giving us four meters per second. So still a little less than the rotary, but again, so speed, Speed three, where most people use it, is 4,000 orbits per minute, and speed five is 4,400. That's why I cut with a 21. But if we go to a three millimeter DA, even though it's turning at 12,000 orbits per minute, it's only giving us 1.8 meters per second of that abrasive movement. And with the, uh, the app, we need the lowest amount of movement. So if we go to an eight millimeter DA, so I don't know if any of you still have your old DAS-6 kicking around, okay. So that one at 6,000 orbits per minute, which is its top speed, I believe, or at least it was for the Porter cable, that's still only 2.5 orbits, or that's still only 2.5 meters per second. So we want two and a half meters per second and below to apply the app. More than that, because there's polysilazine and ceramic coating in it, you will actually set that coating and make it very hard to wipe off. You can use it by hand. Uh, if you want to build your shoulders, you don't feel like going to the gym, go for that. For $49.95 at Bunnings, you can buy Nozito. And this one, I didn't have to remove the pad break. Uh, <laughs> there wasn't one. But a lot of the more expensive machines will have a pad break. Uh, but a three millimeter random orbital sander is one of the best tools you can use for the app. So the app, as I mentioned, uh, it's deep cleaning the paint, first of all. It's swelling the paint slightly, and with the polysilazane and SiO2 that are in it, very minimal content, it's just keeping it in that open position. We can polish a section or apply it to a section and wipe it off immediately, or we can polish the whole vehicle, go for lunch, have a late lunch, come back, do another car and wipe it off. There's no specific timing involved. You can wipe it off and immediately coat, or you can wipe it off and coat tomorrow. Again, no specific timing involved. A lot of the primer polishes on the market, because of the way they work and they fill, they have very strict regimens of, you need to do it this way and that way, and it, they're confusing more than anything else. Yeah, uh, humidity, temperature, no big deal. As long as you're not you know, above 40 degrees, you're okay. Uh, this bottle, so 473 mil bottle, will easily do 30 cars. And if you follow our instructions, you'll get 40 vehicles out of a bottle. We're not using a lot. Uh, this bottle has already done four cars, and you'll see how much it has in it. Does it have any cut at all, say if you're lazy? Very, very minimal oh, cut. Oh, it is efficient, sorry. I need Thank a you. Brand new car and yeah, brand new car, this is all you need. All right, cool. Now as detailers, We tend to strive for perfect paint. And uh, if you know Jason Kilmer, he's a very well-known detailer in the USA, uh, also goes by the name Sandman. He spends up to a year polishing a car. And that's, yeah, they're, yeah, they're very, you know, they're, they're not daily drivers, trust me. The cars he works on never see the road again, but he can spend up to a year polishing a car. And he's the first one to tell you perfect paint does not exist. 
He is also the first one to tell you that he'd never take sandpaper to a street-driven car and factory paint. And he doesn't like to remove everything on the paint. As detailers, our customer tells us, I want my paint to be perfect. As soon as your customer tells you that, you need to ask them one question. Like when you picked it up from the dealership. And they will say, yes, just like when I picked it up from the dealership. For us, that's not perfect paint. It's a starting point. It's okay, but we can do much better. For the average consumer, that is perfect paint. So when your customer says, I want perfect paint, that's what you should give them. The days of the two-step paint correction or three-step paint correction should not exist. We don't have enough paint left on our vehicles. What we did here, one pass with the wool, one pass with the, uh, the foam, that's all we should be doing. As detailers, we tend to see a scratch and want to remove it. We're never, we've never removed a scratch. Not one of you here has ever removed a scratch from paint. You have removed the paint around the scratch. You have damaged the paint down to the level of that scratch. You have caused more damage than good. It looks great. We think we've done something because it's shiny now. But in reality, we're damaging paint. We're making it worse by doing it. I'm gonna start with eight to 10 drops, which is more than enough to do this whole bonnet. After I've primed the pad like I've just done, from there, we will only do one or two drops per panel. A 30 mil bottle will easily, to, easily do two vehicles this size. Wow. So I'm gonna start in the center of the bonnet, applying a cir circular motion. The reason for the circular motion, there's a number of them. First of all, it reduces potential high spots. The other thing is, it's easier on my body. I'm not starting and stopping in areas. But most of companies say crosshead method is the best way. It's not the best way? They say like, they want No, yeah, it's not the best way. You can, if you want to cross hatch with this coating, by all means, cross hatch. If you want to do triangles, do triangles. If you want to do figure eights, hexagons, octagons, whatever geometric shape suits your fancy, do it. But with a, uh, the circular motion, it is the motion that will use the less, least amount of coating and give you the best results in terms of evenness and leveling. And if you look now, it's almost gone. Yeah. Everything is little. Almost. It almost self levels. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do the, this? Yes. yes, it smells like a coating. That's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that smells familiar. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Just the other day, just go by this came off these like a like, leveling bar. Pardon me? No, no. Some company just uh, in the key. Yeah. Uh, if there's almost like a black bar or applying bar, oh. small bar, so they say, oh, it's going to be helpful, you're labeling well or something like that. Yeah. This piece in the pad. Are these similar to the old optimum yellow yeah. ones? The blue ones, you mean? Uh, yeah. Blue or the yellow foam ones. Yellow is cool. Yellow foam ones. Uh, no. No. I don't know if the, 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 the pro plus applicators. Yeah. The blue ones, and then there were these. So these are made in the USA. Anyone here left-handed? Okay. Uh, if you're left-handed, because I'm right-handed, so I used it this way. If you're left-handed, you can do this. Now it's ready for a left-handed person. <laughs> no, just joking. Uh, but if you drop it on the ground halfway through the job, you can flip it and keep using it. I have two towels for leveling. None of them will get wet. The first one is the one actually doing all the work. That's why it's a short nap towel. And then the second one, we'll use a fluffier towel. And this is just for insurance, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Now you noticed how little coating I applied. Mm -hmm. As long as the applicator is leaving a trail behind it, that's all we need. We don't need to make it wet. More is not better, actually more is worse. 
it can cause phantom high spots. Phantom high spots are when you've coated the panel, you've leveled it, it looks great, there are no high spots, and an hour later you come back and you find a high spot. And you're guaranteed you didn't miss it. That's because you had too much coating, the solvents are coming through the coating and causing what looks like a high spot again. That's a phantom high spot. We want you to apply this thin. We want you to be cheap with it. I have two qualities in life, I'm cheap and I'm lazy. That's what I want you guys to be. When you're done, you do not throw your towels away. You do not throw the applicator away. You put it in your wash bucket and let them soak for 15 minutes and you can reuse them. Yeah, not quite excellent. Towels in the really? bin every time. And, you know, <laughs> can I reuse them for like just chuck work or reuse them as normal towels? As they're towels. Yeah, because you know, with some coatings, I've tried that and it's the towels crash. You can't use it. Like it's hydrophobic no matter what you do. I've tried soaking it for 24 hours. You don't pick up the coating with that. No. Okay. It's already cured. On There's no coating on the towel. If you're doing this right, you have no coating on the towel. The one towel, you'll use one side for the whole car and it's still dry. Okay, so you do you like two towels for the whole car? Yes. Because we're just, we're, we're spreading the high spots into the low spots. That's all we're doing with the towel. We're not removing the coating. We're not removing the excess. The other thing with our coating is the solvent carriers are, we have the only coatings that they can import to Australia easily because there's no danger, there's no uh, components in it classified as dangerous goods. So they're not class three, they're not class eight, which are explosive or corrosive. They're uh, transport safe solvents. They're safer for you as well. So they can be sent by air basically. Yes, yeah. yeah. They can be sent by air uh, like three days, as opposed to general freight, which is really expensive. You can shell ship them by air, but it takes two or three weeks yeah. if you have to go through general freight. These can actually board the plane and sit on a seat if you want. Uh, a little expensive, better underneath, but they're not, they're not classified as dangerous goods. And the DIY coatings as well. So, any questions? One hour after this is applied, it can drive away in the rain. Like spraying WD-40. Hey, can you dry that car? Hey, come on. 